When calamity tends to repeat itself, it turns to be a tradition. And if calamity is condoled, if it turns to a tradition, it will be a norm as an a practice in the rest of other practices. As a matter of fact, for the fact that the last presidential election was not very fair and credible, in the eyes of even the European election observers who came and saw all what transpired in that election and saw that INEC was nonchalant to even punish and bring all the electoral offenders to book, those persons who invaded ballot buses, those persons who made and differentiated, you know, electoral observers, those persons who beat up even INEC officials, all these were one and two things that occurred in that presidential election. And all these things were not brought to book. The offenders of these laws and the offenders of the persons who are guilty of all what transpired in that presidential election have not been brought to book. They've not started any trial on them. What INE could do is to go and declare a particular candidate as a president of the country. It is not as if that is enough for INE. INE went further to state that they were right to even declare the election. The places where a lot of persons did not vote, where there were differentiations, INEC did not see reasons to probably conduct a rerun election on those places. As if that is not enough, the electoral system, the beef as INEC promised and told Nigerians that that will be a criterion to upload results. We are not also met. Some places, some polling units, the beavers were down. They were not duly charged. Some places, network was uh, was always affecting them. There were glitches and the rest of it. The glitches only occurred on the presidential election. On the presidential pool, it did not even occur to the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Red Chamber House and the Green Chamber House were not default of these glitches. It rose a lot of questions. So many persons have continued to question INEC. Why then did these glitches occur only on presidential election involving P2B, Atiku Abubakar, Kwankwaso, and Bola Metinimbo? That is where INEC failed to understand that, irrespective of the fact that you have conducted that election and you have stated that the election is free and fair, these glitches ought to be brought to book. P2B approached the court with the Evidences and professors and technicians he brought to court televised equipments and documents that shows that outrightly these were the evidences of what really happened in that presidential election. Instead of INEC to admit it, INEC refused and stated that those documents were not certified by them, forgetting the fact that they were the persons that made that those documents available for P2B and his legal team. It is not clear that the court has seen those documents P2B has brought and they have accepted them as a working document and they have also made avail for INEC and other parties whom P2B has sued for them to make sure that they appear in court and begin to defend or to state the reasons why all those irregularities and discrepancies occurred in that presidential election. As a matter of fact, so a lot of persons are not even aware of how the court has scheduled this case, how the court has made sure that all jurisdiction is moves in order. The court has just adjoined the, the court case and the, they will be resuming the court case on the 3rd of July 2023. And on that 3rd of July, the first correspondence will be INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission. They will appear before the court from that 3rd of July 2023 to 7th of July. They have barely three or four days to come and explain to the fact why they were glitches as stated by the mathematician and the Amazon professor and the Amazon operator that P2B brought to the court. INEC will come and explain what really happened, why they transmitted the Senate result, the House of Representatives result, and failed to transmit the presidential result. INEC will come and explain what happened to the misappropriation of figures. INEC will come and explain what really occurred, where some persons were different, differentiated. INEC will come and explain to the fact why 
people that got figures in their respective polling units when they went to IRF, it was quite different. INEC will also explain the reason why the 25% aggregate vote was not met and they quickly declared a particular candidate and a political party as the winner of the election and even gave him certificate of return. All these are what INEC are going to come to explain to the court on the 3rd July to 7th July. And it will be very, very interesting because a lot of persons who want to know the defense INEC has for them to be bold enough to have declared that election to be peaceful. After that, on the 8th July 2023 to 13 July 2023, the second and third correspondence will appear in the court. And who are these second and third correspondence? They are Bola Metinimbu and Kashim Shetima. They will come to explain. Ever since the court case has resumed, Bola Metinimbu has not appeared in the court. Kashim Shetima has not appeared in the court. They are moving about making implementations, placing policies, and carrying out their government functions without understanding that the fact they need to appear in the court. But with the virtue of the court being mapped out, that on the 8th of July to the 13th of July, these two bodies are going to come to the court to explain, either through their legal team or whosoever that's going to represent them accurately, to come and explain to the fact that Kashim Shetima had a dual nomination form as a senator in Bonu State and also had a nomination form, picked a nomination form for the vice presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress. He will come to the court to explain to that fact. All the allegations and all Evidence that has been proven over Bola Metinimbu's dual citizenship, drug case, and all what have you. They will also come to court to defend that, all those criterions. As a matter of fact, on the 4th, 14th of July 2023 to 17th July 2023, the fourth correspondence being the APC, the flag bearer out which Bola Metinimbu and Kashin Shetima contested, they will come and explain to the fact why a particular candidate credentials we aren't accurate before they gave him the eligibility to contest i will come and defend and apc will also come and defend all this and by so doing the court will close all the evidences on the 17th july 2023 by 17 july the court will close all evidences they will not accept any evidences from any political party or candidates the correspondence address on the 28th of july 2023 the correspondence address will take place Petitioner's address on the 5th of August, the petitioner's address will also come to play in the courts. Correspondence reply will occur on the 11th August 2023. The adoption of addresses will be on the 12th August 2023. Meanwhile, the judgment will be announced by the court. After all these procedures, you see, a lot of persons don't even know that the court has already scheduled that the case is not up, is not supposed to move more than 180 days. So that they will give their final judgment and if a particular candidate is not happy over the judgment that has been given he or she may further the case further but it's now obvious that p2b has presented all he had as a petitioner and he's now waiting for the defenses of the apc the INEC, and also bola metinbu and kashim shetima it is obvious that all eyes are on judiciary for them to give their final verdict and make sure that all the evidence is proven by p2b on the, on the fact that that election was not free and fair with the documents and the report the election uh, observers has given, European election observers has given to the court. All this will be what they are going to use to vet their case and probably the five-man panel of judges led by Justice Harona will finally give his judgment. It is now obvious that you have seen all the scheduled dates and plans for this case between Pitobi and Bola Metinimbu. What is your take on this?